Look at verse 54. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the quick. And they began gnashing their teeth at him. But being full of the Spirit, he gazed intently into heaven and saw the glory of God. And Jesus standing at the right hand of the Father. Standing. Why was Jesus standing? What do you think he saw? What do, you, do, you think, do you think that Stephen actually saw something? Do you think he just imagined it? Man, I think he saw it. I think he was so in the spirit, he just opened his eyes and he looked up. It didn't matter how much they were yelling. I, it's, it's, it, it just probably dissolved into nothing. And all he saw was Jesus standing, not sitting. See, it's interesting because all through the Bible, in other places in the Bible, he's sitting beside the Father. Seated beside the Father. But now he's standing. And when Jesus is standing, I, I think that what's happening is Jesus is saying, Stephen, my man, I'm here. I'm with you. And he's making intercession with the Father. And he's saying, Father, here's my boy Stephen. He's willing to die for me. I stand in respect, in honor, with my hands open wide, saying, I love you. I'll get you through this. I've been there too. Come on. I think Stephen just looks up. He sees Jesus standing, praying for him, inviting him. And he thinks, with Paul, for to me to live is Christ, but to die, ah, that's gain. That's great. That's so much better. And as the rocks hit him, I'm sure he felt pain, but he kept his eyes on Jesus. And when his eyes were on Jesus, he could say, Lord, take me. Take me home. Oh, and by the way, Lord, forgive these people. Forgive them. Don't hold it against them. And he goes. Wow. Such power to be able to do that. Say, was Stephen a special kind of man? No. He was a man just like you and me. He wasn't special. He was just a man who had fixed his eyes on Jesus and could go through death in peace. Now, what trouble do you have that's so big that you have to get upset, that you have to get angry, that you have to feel condemned, that you have to be sad, worried, anxious, discouraged, fearful, depressed, confused, defensive? Your eyes are just not on Jesus. That's all. That's all it is. Your eyes are just not on Him. You keep your eyes on your trouble and you'll always be the list I just read. There isn't anything good in your trouble except to keep your eyes on Jesus. You keep your eyes on Jesus, it changes you. You keep your eyes focused on Him and it'll change how you act and how you react. What you say and what you don't say. I'm not going to finish the outline. The fight we always have is a fight over truth. It is always about what is true. What is true about Stephen's heart and Jesus' heart was that they loved God and submitted to him. That's all it really takes. I remember saying it to an old evangelist one time, um, I said, do you, do you do much counseling? He said, I don't counsel anybody. He's a great guy. Walked with God. 
And then he, and I said, no, you don't? He said, no. I just tell them, get right with God and everything else will work out. And I'm going to tell you something, people. The number of counselors is growing exponentially in this country because it's not what people need. What they need is Jesus. What they need is the power of God in their lives. What Christians need is to get right with God. And he'll fix tons of stuff. Now am I saying don't count, don't let anybody count? No, but I am telling you, get that fixed first. And you'll find a lot of stuff falls out. Just get. I have not seen a godly person walking in faith and believing God who needs to go to a counselor. God cleanses our hearts, fixes lots of stuff. Now my challenge to you today is to be like Stephen. Be a man, be a woman of God who is full of grace and power. And you can look any trouble straight in the face. I, I, there are some movies I really kind of like. Mary Jo hates you know, the Matrix movies, you know. I, I like the one, this is the part I like when the guy goes. I like that part. I can do that. You ought to be able to look at trouble and just say, come on, come on. Because you have grace and power, like Stephen. You're not afraid, not afraid. Okay, let's bow our heads and let's pray this morning. Lord, the battle is always over truth in our lives. What's true? What's right? As Christians, Lord, we've put our faith in you. We think the Bible's right. And wherever the Bible and this world differ, the world is wrong. And you are right. I don't accept part of the Bible. I submit to all of it. I don't just believe it. I submit to it. Father, there are so many Christians today, they're not like they're not like Stephen and not like Jesus because they've never submitted their hearts to you, to your word. They hedge their bets and wonder why they have no power. Wonder why trouble overcomes them. And Lord, we, we ask you today, as we submit to you and submit to your word, that you would make us like Stephen, men and women, full of grace and power, balanced believers. Thank you for Stephen's life, for his death. Thank you for putting it in your word. Thank you for the importance you, you made of it. And Lord, we thank you for how we can be victorious too. No matter what trouble we're in, Lord, we can say, come on. I'm ready. I'm more than a conqueror through Christ. Oh Lord, we pray your blessings on us. And ask you to go with us. And to use us this next week. Lord, as people bring suffering into our lives, give us grace and power to stand firm believing you. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Hebrews says to fix your eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of your faith. The only way you are going to have victory in the middle of your problem is for you to see Jesus. That's, that's what Stephen did. He saw Jesus and he could forgive and he could go through it you won't have victory until you see Jesus amen